Hi there guys, got a video here for you today on the Anschutz 9015 and what we're going to be doing in this one is starting to make a bench rest stock for the rifle. I've got some laminated wood in the vise on the mill and we're just milling the bottom flat. This bit of laminate is an off cut from another rifle we made a stock for so it's already cut to the rough shape. But we're facing off the bottom first so we have a nice flat surface to work from. The part that we just milled flat was the fore end of the stock and now we're going to be moving to the butt end of the stock. So again we're just milling this flat and that will just help us in later operations. So we have nice flat faces to work from. The shell mill does leave a very nice finish on the wood. It doesn't burn it or anything, you do get quite a nice finish on the laminates. And as long as you're not taking excessive cuts, it doesn't bust the sides out. But we're just taking it one mill at a time milling the face down until we get a nice flat surface. This isn't the final dimension yet, we will be trimming it up later, but for now we're just roughing out the profile of the stock. Once that's done we can use a long end mill to clean up the area between the butt end of the stock and the fore end. This eventually will be the grip of the stock and I want this nice and vertical. We might have to walk this back a little at a later date, but for now we're just getting the profile established. For the last few finishing passes we did have to put a G-clamp on the each side of the laminate to stop it from busting out. Now the grip is obviously going to be a lot thinner than this when this stock's finished, although I may have a palm shelf or something like that on it, so I want to try and keep as many of the laminates intact as possible. The other way to square up the grip would have been to flip the stock on its side and go through the laminates rather than pass them. That would have stopped them busting out and still given us a nice square finish. And I may do that at a later date if I need to walk the face of the grip back a little. And here's just a little overview of the stock profile. It's a bench rest stock so obviously it's fairly flat and blocky. We are going to try and make some nice shapes in it so you see the patination of the laminates. But first we need to make sure that the action's inletted nicely. And that we have all the features that we want on the stock so that we can hold it in the vise nice and easily. After that we can put the stock back in the vise and mill the top side parallel to the bottom. Again just using the big shell mill to hog out the material and create a nice flat surface. The shell mill does create a nice finish on the laminates although it does create a hell of a lot of dust. So where possible I am using the hoover to try and collect as much dust as possible to stop it going into the air and to stop it messing up the garage. But once it's flat we can start pocketing out the centre of the stock to accept the action. Now I like to make my actions a real nice tight fit in the stock. So I always mill my pockets out with the end mill and check the action against the stock. So the first thing that we do to pocket the action out is to plunge mill it. And then once we've plunged milled roughly to depth we can go round and clean up the walls. We obviously have to do the pocketing in stages as there is a number of different heights and different widths that we need to accommodate as we move through the inletting. This first section here will house the back half of the action and this is also the part that accepts the stock bolt. For anyone interested we're milling this 38mm deep and the action itself is 28mm wide. We are going a little deeper than necessary with the inletting and we'll clean up the top face at a later date just to get the action at the perfect height relative to the stock. But once we've got the first pocket done we can check the action in the stock to make sure it's a nice tight fit and then move on to other aspects. The next one we're going to be milling is a little shelf in the back there which accepts the back of the block and also a little nub cut out for the hammer spring as it does come through the back of the block and needs to be accommodated in the stock. And this shelf is the same width as the pocket that we just done although it's a slightly shallower at 16mm. The last part we'll mill out is the front pocket and this will house the front of the block. Now this is slightly wider at 32 millimeters, and it also has to be milled slightly deeper. In total this one has to be milled 42.1 millimeters deep and if I've measured everything correctly all three steps that you've seen me mill here should have contact with the stock. As we was milling this out I was using the standard Anschutz 9015 club stock as a sort of guide although when I was taking measurements from it I noticed that they weren't adding up with the measurements I was taking from the block and upon closer inspection the actual action in the Anschutz stock doesn't fit nice at all. There's a lot of rattling and it looks like there's not a lot of contact between the action and the stock. So I stopped taking measurements from the end shit stock and just started making my own up. Once we've got the pockets milled out we can start milling out the little cutout for the safety switch or the trigger training mode switch. So we're putting the action in the stock, marking the switch position with a pencil and then we're milling it out. So I plunge milled most of the material first and then we're coming back and just cleaning up the walls. After the waste material had been cut out 
we did come back with a corner radius end mill or a ball nose end mill just to clean up the sides and give the corners a little radius just makes it look a little neater and puts a nice finish on the walls now you can see from the stock there we did have a little bit of laminate bust out from this front although that's not a problem as we will be milling quite a few laminations off each side to get the stock to thickness now as i couldn't use the anshut stock as a guide I did have to mill the action a little deeper than I would like. So the last thing to do in this setup is just to mill the top of the stock to get it down to where I want it to be. My ideal action height is so that the floor of the loading area is just above the stock. And we're doing that with the end mill. We're using the end mill rather than the shell mill in this instance as we don't want to bust the internal laminates away and mess up the nice finish that we've got inside the inlet. So working our way round, nice thin cuts with the end mill cutting away from the center of the stock. Next up, we can flip the stock in the vise and start milling out the trigger pocket. Now we're plunge milling the waste material out first as it's the quickest and easiest way to remove the most amount of material. And then we'll be coming through and cleaning up the walls. Now in this setup, I do have a scrap or sacrificial piece of ply under the stock to stop me damaging my vise and to stop the laminates from busting out on the other side of the stock. We are obviously going all the way through, and if there was nothing supporting the other side, we'd bust through, and it'd create a mess on the other side. And although you can't see it from this angle, we did bust through into the inlet that we completed earlier. So we can put our trigger blade back on our action, and check that in the stock. I will have to clean up the inside of the inlet, but I'll do that off camera as you won't be able to see much and it will be fairly delicate work. But the final thing we will do is drill the hole for the stock bolt. The stock bolt in this rifle is an M5 so we're going to be drilling a 5.5mm hole straight through the stock. And then at a later date we'll create a recess on the other side of this hole for a nice ferrule so that the screw doesn't bite its way into the wood. But you'll see that a bit later on in the stock build. But with that done, I'll take you over to the bench and we'll show you the action in the stock. Right then, so that's all the work done to the stock so far. We've got all the action inlet nicely. We've also got the trigger pocketed out so that we can see through the side here and see our trigger. I'll show you the action in the stock in a minute. And we've also got the rough layer of the shape of the stock all nice and established. I would have liked to get the actual cylinder inlet with the action as well although i am waiting on a radius cutter to do that job so this is a radius cutter for those of you who are not aware and it just allows us to create a round bottom hole in the bottom of the stock like so this one is a 20 mil radius cutter the one we're waiting for is a 16 mil radius as the actual cylinder of the Anschutz 9015 is 32 mil in diameter we are going to be free floating the cylinder, meaning that the cylinder won't touch the walls of the stock or the bottom of the stock in any way. But we'll talk a little more on that when we actually inlet the cylinder into the stock. Before we put the action into the stock, I will just bring back the Enschutz standard 9015 club stock. And I'll show you the fit of the action into the stock. So it goes in, it's a fairly loose fit. The thing I don't like about it though is that rattle. So if we get the action where it's supposed to be, see the action is a fairly loose, rattly fit within the stock itself. I believe that's because it's only touching in two places. It's so touching at the back here with this lip and also on the front edge of this front block. So the actual middle of the action is free floating within the stock itself. The inletting we've managed to achieve on the this stock is touching in all three flat points of the stock. So on the bottom of the front block, the bottom of this middle section here, and on this back edge here. So this action sits in the stock nice and firmly. I was contemplating drilling this hole, this stock bolt out here and re-tapping it M6 to create a sort of a stronger pull between the action and the stock. Although I don't think I'll bother as we've managed to achieve a real nice tight fit within the stock itself. Push it in there. It does take a bit of force to get it in there, but once it's in there, there's no wibbling or wobbling or like that. So we cock the action. We can fire it through the hole there. And if we take a look at the back here, we have also got access to all these trigger adjustment screws in the base. We will have to obviously drill some holes in this bottom section here, but that will be coming at a later date. 
there we have it there. In the next video, what we'll be doing is finishing off the inlaying. We'll start on the, some of the shaping of the stock. So we'll be doing all the main shaping of the stock, as well as cutting the cheek riser out, starting work on the butt piece and the bottom piece here. We are going to have an adjustable bottom piece at the bottom here so that you can adjust the height of the back of the action to best suit the bag. You'll see what I mean when we actually do it. But there we have it. That's all the work done to the stock so far. So for now guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.